Hello everyone, uh, my name is Hasten Dias and today I have come live just to explain certain things. Uh, by now we all know that uh, the last date for filling the form for IMS has already gone by and uh, some of you might be getting a call to you know appear for the interviews. So today I thought you know why not uh, give you all some hints and uh, some tips how to prepare for interview. So first of all I would like to say uh, first of all prepare your intro okay that is one question which can be asked most of uh, most of the time and it can be asked for most of you guys so prepare your int uh, prepare your uh, intro which is there that is about yourself tell me something about yourself those things you can prepare very well make sure you write it down prepare it because many a times we think that we know it by heart and uh, what can happen is at the time when you're supposed to speak out you get nervous and make sure you prepare yourself your mindset at least uh, that you'll be facing not just one person but around three four guys so prepare for that kind of an attitude okay you might be using it for ms or you might be using it anywhere else uh, this is the best thing to do so prepare the intro very well try to understand what are your strengths and what are your weaknesses and i would suggest when you when we discuss about strengths, uh, don't try to mention something about video games or like playing uh, uh, video games on on, t on you know on TV, whatever games you play. Uh, it could be something which is good, like actual physical games, which are there, like cricket, football, something like that is good, but not video games. That might not uh, create a very good uh, impression on the interviewer who is asking questions. Okay. Secondly, weakness. When we discuss about weakness, I would say weakness has to be something which you have come to know long back uh, which you have started preparing which you have started doing some kind of uh, you know task on that or some kind of preparations you have done some kind of improvement you have done on your weakness so those kind of things should be your weakness and strengths uh, also make sure don't try to google something and create some fake thing try to be genuine whatever you like because as soon as you speak anything in the interview you know you can have two or three sets of sub questions which can come and when those things happen, uh, when those things happen, uh, what can happen is uh, you might fumble because that is not the actual thing which you have in you. So make sure you have something genuine. Think over it. Everyone has some strengths and weaknesses. It is not like, you know, you don't have it. Everyone does have. Also, suppose let's say you are from, a, uh, you have someone who is already in merchantship and uh, try to find out about him. Okay, suppose let's say your uncle is on uh, one of the ships. He might be sailing on one rank. Try to find out which rank he is. Try to find out what ship is sailing, what kind of uh, cargo his ship is carrying, what kind of machineries are there. So if you ask these things and um, if someone is answering, uh, someone is asking you these things and you are able to answer them, so the interview might be very, very happy. Another thing I would like to tell you all is try to find out about what is going on right now. You know, like Olympics, what has happened, who has won, like general questions, you can say general knowledge questions, prepare also on that. Then uh, it will be good if you prepare on uh, ship, about you find out about ship, Google about ship, uh, do a lot of research about ship and uh, try to find out what kind of job it is. And secondly, try to find out some, uh, something about the machines. So some basic things I thought like we will discuss today about some of the few machines. We can have some other machines which will be discussed in the next uh, video if I do live. Okay. So first of all, let's try to understand. Uh, we have uh, a main engine. Main engine which is used to run the ship. Now most of the ships which are there, cargo ships which are there, we have two-stroke engine. Now two-stroke engine is the one which is moving, you know, which can be reversed, which can be moved. In one, it can be rotated in one particular direction and also can be rotated in the other direction. So direction change or reversing of the engine is done basically so that you can facilitate moving the ship ahead or a stern direction. So depending upon that we are able to reverse. So this is the specialty about main engine which is a two stroke engine. Now uh, sometimes for smaller ships and for some coastal ships you might also have a four stroke engine. Now four stroke engine is the one which is rotating at a medium speed or high speed engine whereas two stroke engine is a slow speed engine now for four stroke engine what is there is basically you have the engine rotating in only one direction but you have uh, your reducing gear uh, gearbox you'll have 
and also you will have a CPP propeller with the help of which you can either adjust the speed or also do reversing of the uh, ship movement okay so this is with regards to main engine now in main engine let's say we are discussing about two stroke main engine or even four stroke engines but let's go on more of two stroke two stroke main engines the biggest uh, makers are you can say uh, man bmw and salsa wotsila these are the two types of uh, things which you'll find the latest engines which are there in uh, man bmw we have me engines and uh, in uh, salsa we have uh, artiflex engine this is the electronic type engine but nowadays we are also getting some kind of dual fuel engines methanol engines all those things are coming but they are not much in the market okay then let's try to understand what are the different parts which are there uh, normal ic engine what you can say is piston cylinder head uh, connecting rod crankshaft you know those things are there but apart from that one thing which is special is the piston rod the piston is not directly connected to your connecting rod piston is having something called as a piston rod that is connected to your uh, cross head and cross head is connected to your connecting rod and then connected on to your uh, crankshaft or your propeller shaft which is later connected from the crankshaft so this is how the main engine structure is there now in main engine we also have uh, something called a scavenge manifold exhaust manifold scavenge manifold is the one which is uh, having uh, you know all the air from the turbocharger which comes and gets uh, stored there and then depending upon unit to unit requirement one one unit is taking suction from one of the units okay from the scavenge manifold it is taking as per the requirement so this is how the main engine use getting utilized now the air which is going inside is getting compressed and uh, the piston is basically compressing it uh, because it's a diesel engine compression it's a very compression pressure is very important once the compression pressure is achieved we have injector by the time the uh, piston reaches up the injector will inject the fuel and ignition will happen and uh, we have the power stroke or the expansion taking place and depending upon that you have the piston moving down which is then converted into rotary motion and the pressure at which uh, we are operating nowadays from 60 bar you can have to 120 125 bar also okay and uh, this is how the main engine operates the exhaust from the main engine uh, from the unit is going out through something called as an exhaust valve from the exhaust valve it is going to your exhaust manifold from the exhaust manifold it goes to your turbocharger okay where the turbocharger is rotating on the other side of the uh, turbine the turbine where the exhaust is rotating the other side of the turbine we have the compressor or the blower which is compressing the fresh air from the engine room itself and putting it in your uh, putting it in your scavenge manifold before it goes to the scavenge manifold uh, the air which is there since it has got up uh, heated up it is passed through an air cooler which is cooled down and then it is going to your scavenge manifold so that is how the operation is taking place inside a main engine okay now the exhaust which is there after the turbo charger is also going to something called as an exhaust case boiler or egb we call it so basically it's a form of a heat exchanger where the exhaust gas which is there it is still having some energy in it it is still having some heat in it so that heat is used to heat up the boiler water so in egb what actually happens is the exhaust gas is continuously heating the water which is there in the tubes and that heated water is used to turn into steam inside the boiler so this is how the main engine part is operating okay hope you have got some information if you guys have some doubts do write down do comment if you like the uh, today's video if it has helped you do comment please share please share it to your friends and especially the ones who are preparing for your interview maybe you're not preparing but make sure you share to the friends and colleagues who are about to join not just IMS but anywhere else if they are preparing or even they want to understand what kind of um, uh, what kind of uh, preparations has to be done or what kind of questions could be asked maybe he is preparing for next year do, try, uh, do send him this so that he can also prepare and understand very well and I appreciate all the comments thanks a lot yes uh, please study well please do well and uh, be do follow and uh, be connected for the next part of the videos which I will be putting up uh, in which I'll be explaining all the other all the other machines. 
I might not be doing as per time, but um, whatever time I get, whenever I get free, I will do upload some amount of knowledge. Okay, please do share and be safe till my next video. Thank you.